Brian Ross investigates. Today in Washington, Congress will hold hearings on questionable mortgage practices to try and figure out just what caused a massive mortgage meltdown. And while many factors contributed to the crisis, some say one man played a very big role in joining us as our chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross. And you all got into it a little bit. Good morning, Robin. This is a story about that man and the thousands of Americans who've gone to court to say he needs to be held accountable. They say he and his company essentially led the way in establishing practices that had a lot to do with the current mortgage meltdown in this country. This sprawling multi-million dollar mansion in Brentwood, California, is home to one of America's richest men, Roland Arnold, a man who consumer groups say built much of his fortune on the misfortunes of people who had trouble getting mortgages for their homes. If you're building a Mount Rushmore of people who should be on the face of, of the mortgage lending crisis, I think Roland Arnold has a, has a distinct place in that litany. Arnold was the founder, sole owner, and chairman of a company called Ameriquist, which attorneys general across the country have accused of fraudulent, misleading, and deceptive practices in arranging mortgages for hundreds of thousands of American homeowners. Now, many of Ameriquist's customers are being forced out of their homes, including the Anderson family of New Hampshire, stuck with payments they cannot afford. Walking around pretending like it's not scary every day, so that they're not scared is difficult. The Andersons say Ameriquist promised them a low, fixed-rate mortgage, never telling them the mortgage would be switched to an adjustable rate two years later. The gentleman was like, he promised me everything was going to be great, this is the best move. Their monthly house payments went from $760 a month to $1,400, and they were forced into default. Victims, they say, of Ameriquist tactics and Roland Arnold's greed. I can't even imagine like being able to sleep at night with all that money knowing where it came from. A number of former Ameriquist employees say that deceiving customers about their rates was a common practice, part of a culture to close the deal at any cost. It was to get the customer to feel comfortable with the fact that they were in a loan that they thought was going to be stable, but in reality it really wasn't. Tyson Russell, who worked in an AmeriQuest office in Florida, says other loan officers would falsify customers' job or financial information so they could qualify for mortgages. The people that were doing stuff like that were doing it because they felt like it was okay. For example, this $45,000 retirement plan on a customer's mortgage application made it appear she could afford the monthly payments. I have no 401k plan and I never had a 401k plan at that time. Teresa McCulloch says the retirement plan was made up by the loan officer and added without her knowledge. Now she's part of a class action lawsuit against AmeriQuest. The lawyers suing Ameriquest say that its founder, Arnold, should be held personally accountable for what they allege are the company's deceptive, predatory practices. Mr. Arnold knew or should have known that the practices that he put into place were going to result in this kind of conduct. He didn't have to see any of the fallout. He just got to sit at the top and collect the profits. And the profits were huge. Ameriquest bought the naming rights to the Texas Rangers baseball stadium sponsored a Rolling Stone summer tour, and Arnold and his wife became the single biggest contributors to the Bush-Cheney campaign in 2004. Is there any way to talk to you just for a minute about this? Something he was not eager to talk about during the campaign. Such a wonderful Brian Ruff. Now, AmeriQuest is in shambles. It has fired thousands of employees and closed all of its sales offices. While admitting no wrongdoing, the company paid $325 million to settle the lawsuits brought by 49 states, an amount which seems big, but comes out to less than $1,000 per customer. But Arnold still lives the good life. Ambassador Roland Arnold. After all those big contributions, President Bush appointed Arnold to be U.S. Ambassador to the Netherlands. At his Senate confirmation hearings, Arnold said he was not involved in day-to-day -day operations at AmeriQuest and blamed the problems on rogue employees. When we found out they were let go, an action was taken so that it wouldn't happen again. That's completely laughable. I mean, I think what you had in AmeriQuest was a corporate culture of corruption. For many AmeriQuest customers who have lost their homes, including Deanna Critelli of Tampa, it is appalling that Arnold was selected to serve as an official representative of the United States of America. He can take millions and millions of money, take our homes from us.
for the sake of greed? So he could buy into being an ambassador? I mean, for what? Arnold would not agree to be interviewed for our report this morning, and unlike many of the people who did business with this company, he remains a wealthy and apparently happy man with a number of his own big homes, not to mention his residence as the U.S. ambassador in the Netherlands.